What's good, peeps? You miss me? It's um, it's been a while, right? I feel like I've not filmed for months, although it's only been like four or five days. But it does feel like um, it does feel like a long, long time that I've not filmed. I think I filmed last on Tuesday or Wednesday of last week, so um, it has been a while. So this should be um, quite a long video. Um, I don't even know where to start. Where should we start? I've absolutely no idea where to start. Should we start on the weekend's boxing? Should we have a quick look back at that? Should we start with um, Lyndon Arthur for Dex Spellman on Friday, um, a BT Sports uh, Frank Warren uh, show? Um, Frank Warren needs to sack or reevaluate or do something with his promotional team. Like, I can't blame Frank for it anymore, right? Frank's just one man. He's just one man. He's clearly not Eddie Hearn. He hasn't got that kind of, you know, Eddie Hearn can just turn it on when the camera comes on. He, he doesn't have that. Someone needs to kind of take the mantle and do something. Someone needs to help him. Because, um, because I remember, I knew the fight card was happening, but I remember thinking, no one else does. Like hardcore boxing fans, like hardcore boxing fans would know that Lyndon Arthur is fighting. Right, um, no one else does. The promotion for that event was absolutely non-existent and shocking, and what other words? I can't think of any other big words. Disgraceful. Like, imagine what we knew. And look, some people will say that the um, the Sky Sports Matchroom machine is bigger. Granted, but the Queensbury and BT Sports machine isn't small. It's not like a uh, Mick Hennessy Channel Five show, right? It, it isn't small. Um, Imagine all the, the lead up to fight camp. It's been everywhere, hasn't it? It's been everywhere. Fight camp, fight camp, fight camp, fight camp. It's been everywhere. Literally um, everywhere. Um, these shows that Frank's putting on have been nowhere. Nowhere. It's, it's incredible. And then we, we get um, Mike Coppinger for some reason tweeting the viewing figures. And they've just been disgracefully low. Like, like... There is a bit of a decent backstory with uh, Lyndon Arthur. Tell the story, right? Some people might say, um, some people might say things like it was a shit card. Maybe, but you can dress it up. <laughs> you can dress it up, boy. Make it look like something it isn't. You can do that. And I just feel like, um, again, he needs to sack everyone and just start again. Like he, his team needs to get together and say, all right, how do we make this bigger than it is? Because um, it's it's shockingly bad. It's shockingly bad, honestly. Um, so yeah, Lyndon Arthur fought Dex Spellman, by the way, just to uh, clarify. He was obviously supposed to fight Anthony Yard on the undercard of Dubois versus Joyce. Obviously, because of COVID, that fight card didn't happen. So uh, the plan is now that he fights Anthony Yard. Um, he's a decent boxer, but Anthony Yard will, will beat him. Um convincingly I think I think Anthony Yard's levels above but it's a good domestic showdown I do love a domestic dust up so um not complaining all right let's have a quick look at said fight camp um look for the results very quickly obviously the main event was uh Sam Eginton versus Ted Cheeseman which delivered right delivered credit to both uh that was a war that was a war and credit to both have you guys had a look at Ted Cheeseman's box rec page why has it got a picture of Ted Cheeseman when he was like 10? Sorry, I'm just... Um, why though? Why can't they just update that photo? Anyway, let's have a, a quick... Um, quick gander at the card. All right. Um, Dalton Smith beat Nathan Bennett. Um, decent fight, right? Decent fight. Is that the one? Wait. Yeah, that was the one where... Was that the one where the referee... Um, Ian John Lewis decided to count... That was the fight, right? Where the guy's clearly out. Clearly, like, gone. Yeah, it was the fight. I'm sure it was. I'm like, what are we counting for? Why are we counting to 10? <laughs> I don't know. Fabio Wardley beat Simon Villilli. Um, there is talks about Wardley now possibly appearing on the um, undercard for uh, Dylan white Povetkin. Um, So let's see, right? I still think he's undersized for a heavyweight. I do think he's small. Um, I'm guessing he's about... Looking at him compared to, 
compared to Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn's a tall guy. So I'm guessing Wardley's about 6'2". And Wardley weighs 16 stone. That's quite small for this era of heavyweights. I mean, chuck him back into the 80s and he's fine, right? He's a normal size. But this era of heavyweights where the guys are either 6'5", 6'6", six, 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 or 17, 18 stone, as we've seen, right? It's the land of the giants and he's not a giant. I don't know. He's got to be very... You've got to be Usyk skilled, I think, to be undersized and still be able to really make a run of it. Run of it. But maybe... I don't know what his ceiling is. If his ceiling is sort of British, European level, then maybe he, he um, he's okay. But if his ceiling is further more than that, then I think he's just going to be undersized. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Jordan Gill beat Reese Pelosi. Good win for Jordan Gill. Uh, James Tennyson, former world title challenger, beat Gavin Gwynn. And um, Sam Eginton lost to Ted Cheeseman. Um, no shame in that loss. No shame in that loss. I'm oh, saying fight, fight fans are so fickle. Um, boxing fans, sorry. Oh, right, this is his last chance. Why is it his last chance? Why Last chance of what? Like, he can still have good fights. That was a good fight. Like, he could, like let Scott Fitzgerald fix himself up. I wouldn't mind St. Eggington versus Fitzgerald. I mean, there are good fights out there for him. 154 pounds in this country, all of a sudden, is actually quite deep. So there's some good fights out there for him. So um, I don't know why people are saying this is his last chance. I mean... Again, we need to get rid of that mentality. It needs to be more of, and it needs to be more of an MMA mentality where you still can have fights. Uh, I'm just looking at the British sort of rankings now. Yeah, Kieran Smith's there, right? Unbeaten, good fight. Obviously, Fowler's there. Um, James Metcalf is there. Hamza Shiraz, obviously, some of these are promoted by a different promoters, so it might be a bit difficult. But there's some good little fights out there for him. Kieran Conway. Stephen Donnelly, these good fights out there. So um, he's not done. Let's just see what happens. As for um, Ted Cheeseman, I was thinking about like where he goes next because he's obviously want to go higher. Uh, he's already fought the European champion and he got kind of bust up in that fight. So um, he's not going to go that route. So he might go a Fowler route, right? I mean, Fowler's on this fight camp card, so they might be looking to match them up. So yeah, um, decent fight card. How would you guys score it? I mean, I... Gave it a 7 out of 10 prior uh, to the fights. Kind of there again. 6, 7. Decent, right? Decent. Just it looked good. It was pleasing on the eye. That's what it was. All right, let's talk um, some other stuff. Um, I'm a bit late to the party here. But I do know that um, Paulie Malinaji uh, got sacked by Showtime, right, for an interview that he did with um, IFL TV. Now... I think I'm right in saying the, inter the, the interview in question was, or the, the, the reason he was sacked was because of this um, Devin Haney situation where Devin Haney said um, he won't lose to a white guy. I hated that, by the way. I just didn't like that. I think I made a video saying that's wrong to say. Um, and I think Paulie said, if he's talking about Luke Campbell, you know, maybe so, but he can't be talking about Loma, who is white, right? Loma would, would beat him. I agree 100%. And then he went on to say, and I don't know if I'm wrong in thinking this is the reason. I hope it's not because it's stupid. He went on to say that right now, obviously the dominating boxers out there right now are white, right? I mean, especially the Eastern Europeans. And I think that's what he was alluding to. So he said that there was a time when blacks completely dominated or African-Americans or 1780s and 90s, true. Uh, and before that, you had Italian-Americans. And before that, you had the Jews. Before that, you had the Irish. If that's the reason he's been sacked, then I don't know. We just can't talk as humans anymore. If that's the reason, 100%. If that is the 100% reason, and I've probably just summed up too quick, right? There's probably a bit more to it. But if that's part of the reason as to why he's been sacked, by saying that there is a dominant race in boxing right now, then I... I it's just someone's fucking opinion. I'd like... What, what is going on with the world? Has <clears throat> it got that crazy where you... Anyway, you know what? If I'm Paulie, I'm not even sweating it. I'm not even sweating it. It's not like Paulie's a racist or anything stupid like that. I'm not even sweating it because Paulie, for me, is the best commentator out there. Like, it's a toss-up between Paulie and... Um, uh, Mike Costello is very good as well, by the way. But in terms of TV one. So Paulie and Andre Ward. I like Paulie because I think he's a bit more 
just animated, not crazy animated like a Timothy Bradley, who I think just goes OTT, but is animated, but he's also very good at breaking a fight down like Andre Ward is. Like, the, both of them are amazing. So Paulie won't be out without a job for a long time. If I'm zone, I just write a check now because he smashes every single person that zone broadcast. So um, chin up, Paulie, if you're watching this. You never know, you might be watching this. Um, you'll get a job. You'll get a job. I'm shocked that Sky... If I'm Sky, or yeah, or Matram or whoever, I don't know, I would offer him a full-time contract. Like the way Matram fly David Diamante. So David Diamante now is pretty much Matram guy, right? He does all the, the stuff for Matram to zone Sky. I, I would offer Paulie a similar thing, where Paulie just literally flies over for every single thing Sky do. Because Paulie is as good as it gets. It, he really is. I remember um, listening to him when Tony Bellew for Usyk. And I think David Hay was in the, the commentary booth with him. I'm pretty sure. And David Hay just... Um, it's not very good. And the way Paulie was breaking down exactly what Usyk was doing or, and was about to do was just phenomenal. Phenomenal, right? And he, he, we know that he comes over here and as us as fight fans appreciate him because we know he comes over here with no bias, right? He's not coming over here as a, a matchroom fanboy or as a Sky Sports fanboy. He's coming over here as just a guy that loves boxing. It's that simple. It, it really is that simple. I think you could have Paulie's best friend fight someone that he doesn't like and he still will be neutral. He'll just say it as it is. And I, I, I love that. I love that about him. So it's a shame that Showtime have fired him, but he will get another job, no doubt about it. Um, what else do you want to talk about that's maybe not on here? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Tiafima Lopez, Vasil Lomachenko. Again, I'm late to the party, so apologies if you know this news already. But um, it was reported, I think, by Mike Coppinger that there is an issue with that fight happening now just because... Tiafimo Lopez won't take um, the money that's being offered. I, I believe the money that's being offered is 1.2 million. Uh, I believe Loma has been offered something like 3.5. So heavy, heavily A-side a favoured is Loma's purse. Um, now, I'm guessing that the purse was a lot bigger when they agreed to fight in May because it would have 110% been on pay-per-view. It would have 110% sold out any venue it was going to take place in. So ticket revenue would have been good as well. Um, now let's talk about it not being on pay-per-view and obviously we know it's going to be behind closed doors, maybe. So you can understand why um, their money has decreased. Uh, Tiafimo seems to not want that money and now they're trying to say the fight's in jeopardy. I just think that Tiafimo is doing what any person should do is not accept the first offer. It's that simple, right? You'd be dumb to accept the first offer in anything. That's just a lesson in life, by the way. Never accept the first offer. If you know what you're bringing to the table and you know your worth, right? Um, go and get your worth and don't accept the first offer. That's all it is. Um, Tiafimo, I, I mean, look, Loma is the A-side in this, but Loma's not a draw. Loma's not a draw. So for Loma to earn three times as much as Tiafimo, maybe Tiafimo's like, oh, no. I'm happy with a 75 or a 70-30 split, possibly, or a 60-40 split, but I mean, they're, they're far away from each other. So, um, fingers crossed they get it ironed out. I'm sure they will. I just think it's a case of Tiafima saying, uh -uh, you can't lowball me like that, right? You can't do that. Kind of what Canelo is doing right now. Um, credit as well to Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, who will get it on uh, November, I believe the date is. Fox pay-per-view, I mentioned it before, but it now has been 110% confirmed that Errol Spence's first fight back since a car crash will be to take on uh, former world champion Danny Garcia. I mean, when you get some of these fighters now that um, are coming back from small injuries and saying they need a warm-up fight, I mean, this guy had a life-threatening car crash. Could and should be dead. I mean, if you saw the video, that I still don't understand how this guy's walking right now. I don't. Um, but he's coming back, and I, I think it's good that he wasn't rushed back because he was talking about fighting in July. And I do believe if COVID didn't happen, they could have got this fight on a lot sooner. Remember, it was supposed to happen in January of 2020. But I think they would have got it on July if COVID didn't happen. Um, I'm happy it has happened and it's delayed it a bit so he gets more time um, to fully be 100% Errol Spence. And that's what I want to see. I want to see the best Errol Spence. I don't think I've seen the best Errol Spence since Kel Brook. I know he, be he put a beating on Lamont Peterson, but I still think um, it it's not been the best. That Errol Spence that showed up against Brook because Brooke showed up. I know people will talk about the weight reduction. Brooke showed up 
and Errol Spence just went mano mano against him toe for toe and broke him down. If that Errol Spence turns up or that Errol Spence, Spence still exists, then fantastic. But don't sleep on Danny Garcia. Forget all the antics of his dad. Forget that. Don't sleep on him as a boxer. Like I, I slept on him when he fought Amir Khan, destroyed him. I slept on him when he fought Lucas Matisse. Both of those times he was favourite to lose. He was the underdog. Um, he's had razor-thin fights against Keith Furman and Sean Porter. Legit razor-thin fights, right? Could have gone either way. I ain't sleeping on him. I, I think he's got slow feet, but I think I said this before. He's got a, a laser right hand. He throws it. It is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Boom. That's his right hand. So, um, yeah, credit to both, man. America are rolling out all the big guns, right? PBC, sorry, are rolling out all their big guns. All of them. Uh, credit to them. All right. Um, what have we got here? Uh, Sergio Martinez, August 21st will be the start or the end or something very beautiful. So he's back 100% August 21st. Um, uh, Canelo wants to fight outside of US, grow his market, says Golden Boy Prez. Agreed. Agreed, man. Like boxing needs to be more than just UK and US. Yes, fights happen in other places, but I mean, to grow boxing, it needs to happen all over the world. These are world champions that fight, not just in America, Canelo fights in one state all the time. Like, you know what I mean? It's Vegas, that's it. He doesn't even fight in fucking Madison Square Garden because of taxes, let's be honest, that's the reason. He doesn't fight anywhere else, like, come on. Like, Canelo over here against Billy Joe Saunders is a stadium fight. And I hate this stadium fight thing, but it's a stadium fight. Canelo versus Billy Joe Saunders is a stadium fight and would sell... 60,000 tickets. That's the appetite for boxing over here. People in America must not think, oh, no, it does. It does. It does sell 60,000 tickets over here. Um, him versus Callum Smith could do Anfield. It's true. It's just that Canelo's got that pool and we, we would love to see him, right? We'd love to see him. So, um, yeah, man, come, come over here and fight. Or fight, I don't know, there was talks about him versus Morata, wasn't there, in, um, in Asia. I mean, like, let, let's spread the love. Spread the love. Um, what's this? Eubank Jr. Roy Jones has been active. Don't know how prepared Mike Tyson is. Yeah, Eubank Jr. is talking about uh, he's helping spar or, or get Roy Jones Jr. ready. Um, I don't know, man. Let, let's just see what happens with this with this fight. Um, I mean, we saw um, we saw Nigel Ben getting ready for Sakio Bika, right? And in the end, I think he had an injury um, in camp. Just because, again, I guess as you try and fine tune your body to the point where you're dropping a bit of weight and you really are up in the ante, you're more susceptible at that age to injuries. It's fact. So as good as both of them are looking now, just, you know, a little pad work, once they both go to a level where they're used to going just because they are former greats, the body's going to not respond. And I'll be shocked if they don't get injured and I'll be very shocked if, uh, if um, one of them don't pull out. It's true. Sad, I know, but it's true. What, is it sad, though? I don't know if it is sad. Um, I don't necessarily want to see it, to be honest with you. Uh, well, stop lying, Eddie. I do want to see it. I do want to see it. Um, Vladislav Serenko batters Pavlo Krolenko for TKO in five. I only read this out because Vladislav Serenko is a prospect that I've commentated on in South Africa for like five of his fights, maybe more. Maybe about seven of his fights. Every fight he's had in Africa, basically, I've been in the commentary booth. So I've seen this guy develop and grow. I know that he's given, I'm not going to mention names here, but I know he's given a couple of British fighters hell in sparring. Hell. Um, more than hell, actually. So he's definitely a good prospect. I just wonder why they're taking so long here. Because, I mean, Pavlo Krolenko, I'm sure, was something like two and three. I mean, it's, for, it's a joke. And for him to take five rounds, let's have a look at Pavlo Krilenko actually quickly. Let me not make this up. Pavlo Krilenko, box work. Pavlo Krilenko, three and five. I mean, come on. To be fair, of the five losses, though, he's never been stopped. So that might be something that uh, Vladislav stopped him, but stopped him, sorry. But to go. For a top prospect like Vladislav Serenko, who's 14 and 0 now, to go five with a guy that's three and five, don't look good. Don't look good at all. All right, what else have we got here? Before I pack up, 
Um, um, I might have to look back at some old news. Two sex peeps. Um, I know there's loads that I have missed, obviously, because I've not filmed for so long. Uh, what have we got? I saw something the other day, and it was about um, Dillian White um, trying to get government help for when he returns back to the UK. And what I mean, I'm not trying to say he's going to go and fucking furlough or anything. What I'm trying to say is that, obviously, Dillian White's in Portugal training right now. If he were to come over, like, right now, he would have to self-isolate. That's, that's how it's working, right? You have to self-isolate for 14 days. So, remember, Dylan White's fight's August 22nd. What's the date today? August 3rd. He needs to come over basically now, right? So he's seeking a government exemption so that he can finish up his camp and literally just come over and fight. Does that make any sense? So he, Katie Taylor, I think Povetkin, all these fighters that are basically not in the UK right now are seeking government exemption so that they don't have to self-isolate, so they can finish off their camps wherever they are, just taper down, and then, I don't know, maybe come a couple of days before fight, and then fight. So I wonder what's happening with that. It is a bit crazy though, that boxers or any sports stars can seek that kind of exemption, right? Self-isolation should have to be self-isolation. But I'm sure that um, he'll be doing all the proper COVID tests. It's funny though, like really and truly, let's be honest, if, if Dylan White was to come over here, remember this is uh, Sky's first pay-per-view for ages, right? If Dylan White was to come over here and test positive for COVID, do you think they wouldn't let him fight on a, on a, on a, on a down low? Do you think they'll pull that? Do you think they'll pull it? Really? Because you know that ain't no pay-per-view with Katie Taylor headlining against Pursuit. Do you think if Dylan White came over here and tested positive for COVID, they would say, fight's off? I think they'd be like, oh, that, you know they'll do that. Like, just, hush, hush. 100%. All right. Um, Joshua versus Pulev targeted for December 5th or December 12th. Oh, boy. By the time this comes around, Joshua would have been out of the ring for a year. And a year. Could Joshua... Like, Eddie Hearn has spoken about Joshua having a fight at fight camp, right? Or maybe... If, worst case scenario, uh, we do get a second wave and COVID kicks in again, which, fingers crossed, it doesn't, but it looks like it's happening around the world. Australia has gone into lockdown, certain parts of Australia. So, I don't know, never say never. Could Joshua have a fight at fight camp not be in Pulev? Could that happen? Like, I think Joshua just needs to have a fight now. Could Joshua, would it be acceptable? Would fans accept it on free-to-air, or free-to-air, kind of free-to-air, Saturday Sky Sports? Would fans accept Joshua having a fight against someone like a, a Tom Schwartz? for three or four rounds. I'd love that. I don't think it would happen, but I mean, it's a stay busy fight, right? Kind of just like what Joe Joyce did and what Daniel Dubois is gonna do. Obviously, because Joshua has these mandatories, mandatories everywhere, it's not possible, but I mean, they might need to consider something like that because Joshua can't, like if there is a second wave and they are best desperately waiting for Joshua to fight in front of 60,000 people to make all that gate receipt money, um, Joshua ain't gonna fight them possibly until next year. I don't know when. I mean, can Joshua literally take 14 to 16 months out of the ring? Doubt it, mate. You can do all the sparring you want in the world. 14 to 60 months is 14 to 60 months. I guess the same can be said of, um, of Pulev, but I don't know. This is about Joshua. I'm not talking Pulev. Um, uh, let's have a look. What else have we got? Actually, let me just check my camera. Don't know where we are for time. Oh, still recording. 25 minutes. All right, last couple of minutes. Any other little bits and bobs we can talk about? Um... Uh, Roy Jones, me and Mike Tyson in our primes would probably beat Fury and Joshua. Would Roy Jones... Roy Jones... I don't think Roy Jones is beating Tyson Fury. I don't think so. I No, he's not. No, no, not having that. I'm not having that. I don't think he is. I know he's fast and elusive and stuff, but I don't think he is. Would he beat Joshua? Would Roy Jones have beat Anthony Joshua? I don't know, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't even make sense for me to say that a, a light heavy or we started as a middleweight would beat up Anthony Joshua. Don't know. I mean, this is an interesting debate. I might have to do that as an Addy and Friends. That's a very interesting um, debate, that one. Um, 
All right, what else have we got? Um, Eddie Hearn could see Fight Camp becoming an annual event. I do like the idea of that, especially with a small crowd. I think that'd be very, very good, right? Um, it could be like their next gen series, but Fight Camp, and then I don't know, something, but I, I like that. Um, I think that is that. I, you know what it is? I don't know when I last done the videos. I don't know if I've already done all these stories already. I'm pretty sure I have. I'm pretty sure I talked about Tony Yoka. Pretty sure I did. Um, all right, guys, that is that. Thank you very, very much for being patient and waiting for my return. Much appreciated. What else we got? Hang on, hang on. Peace.